Welcome to this Revit 2025 What's New video. In this session, we will focus on the structural updates and new features within this latest release. As with previous years, the structural tools have had some great improvements and updates, making the reinforcement and analytical modeling workflows even better. We will also look at some of the new steel detailing improvements and also take a look at the future of steel detailing workflows within Revit. Looking into the future and being able to visualize the path of travel is a great way of understanding some of the new features and improvements within the last few releases. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll begin by checking the rebar lengths. Now to do this, we'll open up our top of foundation plan and we'll also open up a 3D view. Let's now tile these views together. So here we can see the 3D view and now we can also see the plan view of the slab with our rebar sets. Let's now begin by applying a view filter to these models. So we'll go into visibility graphics and we'll select filters. I'm going to go ahead here and edit the filter just so you can see how this has been made. So here we have a filter called rebar length check. Now you'll notice that this is just applied to structural rebar. And if we look at the filter rules here, we have two new properties that we can utilize, maximum bar length and minimum bar length. So of course, in this case, I'm using maximum bar length and I want to actually have the filter set to the maximum bar length being greater than 10 meters. And this means that it will need a splice. So I'm gonna add this uh, filter in over here. We'll go to the lines and we'll change the color to red so we can clearly see these. We'll apply that filter and click OK. And we can now clearly see all of the rebar sets that need splicing. So let's now take a look at how we would splice these rebars. So I'm gonna select all the rebars within the slab. So we'll select all rebars in the host. And now looking up onto the context tab, I can clearly see here we have splice rebar. So there are three different modes we can utilize here. Pick line, which lets us pick any element uh, within Revit, so I can pick grids, reference planes, and so on. I can select by length, which allows me to set a minimum and maximum length and also a run out, or I can modify splices that I've already placed. In this case here, we're going to utilize by length. Now, as I take my cursor over the rebar set, we can clearly see that the splice positions are previewed on screen. So you can see here, I've got a stock rebar on the right hand side, but if I want to flip this, I can press the space bar and you can now see the run out is cycling between the left and the right hand side. So here, I'm now going to place out my first lap. Now, as I select the rebar set, you can now see that that lap has been applied. Looking into the settings of the lap, we'll notice here that we have system families called a rebar splice. And looking here, you can see that I have three different system families already set up within the project. If I look at the type settings here, you can see that we've got shift bars. So this is actually going to move the bars as you can see here. Here, we have a stagger length multiplier, which is 1.3 at the moment. And we also have a lap length as well. Let's now continue to apply some more laps. So this time, we'll actually just go for a 60 times diameter lap with no stagger. And again here, I can uh, hover over the rebar set, press the space bar, and then apply that lap. Again, we can see the lap both in the 3D view and also the plan view. Another way of placing these laps is to use pick line. So here, I'm going to pick this reference plane. And you can see as I select the reference plane, the laps are applied to the rebar set. Now, also here, I can go ahead and select grids to actually apply these laps as well. Of course, if I want to actually edit or change these, I can go to modify splice, and then I can select these elements over here, and I can just remove the splice. So in this case, I'm actually going to remove the splices that were applied in here, and I want to remove this splice as well. And then I'll go ahead and select the green finish tick to actually finish the splicing. Now, one of the really good things with the rebar splice is it's actually parametric. So let's just take a look at this in a bit more detail. So if I select this splice here and we have a look at this in the 3D view, we can see we've got a lap length applied. And also here we've obviously got our stagger offset as well. So if I select both of these rebar sets here and I change the bar from a 12 to a 20, straight away here we can actually see that that splice is parametrically updated. Equally, if I select the two bars again and I select a much smaller rebar, perhaps a H8, 
you can see again here that splice is parametrically updating. So that's really, really useful. And of course, if I select the bars here and I drag the shape handle, of course, we can also see that the splice will then update as well. Now, it's also worth noting that when you use propagate rebar, those splices aren't currently propagated. So it's best to actually get all of the rebar propagated first and then apply the splices afterwards. Next, we'll take a look at the presentation options for multi rebar annotations. So we have a new function now where we can do this for multiple rebar sets. OK, so what I'll do here is close down the 3D rebar view and we'll just focus now on the plan view over here. So let's begin by selecting some rebar sets that we want to apply this uh, new MRA style to. So we'll select all of these rebar sets here and we'll go ahead and select the presentation option from the context tab. So we'll begin by selecting none and then we can now select the rebars that we want to actually display and of course you can see straight away how much quicker this is we don't have to actually do it one by one we can go through and select a single rebar here for all of the selected MRA sets okay so we've got that one done so we can select the finish tool here and straight away we can now see all of those rebars displayed as we want using a single operation so this is much much more effective Let's now go ahead and select a multi-rebar annotation for this now. So we'll select the multi-rebar annotation. And here, we'll go ahead and select all of these uh, rebars in here. So again, you can see here, nice and easy to place these out. Now, what we're going to do as we place these, we're going to look at a new feature here of being able to align these tags. So now, if I just use a crossing window to select all of these, we'll filter out the tags themselves, like so. And then I'm just going to go ahead and select the tags. And you can now see that we have this multiple align option here. Now, this is great. So what we can do is we can actually justify all the tags to the top. So you can see now they're all in alignment. We can justify them to the bottom like this. We can actually distribute these if we wanted to. Uh, so, for example, here I could distribute them all horizontally. Uh, not that I want to do that, so I just undo those. Um, so that's a really, really good way of making sure that we can align all of those tags and get a presentation neat and tidy. Okay, so next we'll look at disable rebar constraints. And we'll also look at some schematic bending details for rebar tagging as well, and some of the bending detail improvements that have also been made. OK, so we've just switched across to another project here. And one of the first things we'll look at is the ability now to disable rebar constraints. So if I select this bar here, if I go into the Edit Constraints tool, we now have some new functionality where we can disable the current selection set or disable all of the constraints in all of those rebar sets. Now, the reason why this feature has been created is that the rebar is all parametric. So if the concrete element changes in size, of course, all of the rebars will update and change as well. Now, this is normally a good thing, but sometimes we don't want that to happen. So let's say that we've already issued all of the reinforcement out and we want to take manual control on the updates. We can simply just disable these rebar constraints. So that's a really good new feature. Let's now look at some of the bending detail improvements that have been made within this release. So we'll begin by going into section one here. You can see I've now got a section through that element that we've just looked at. We'll now create a bending detail. So I'll select this link here and looking up onto the context tab, of course, we have our bending detail function. Selecting this, we can actually see that we've got a new feature here, something called a schematic bending detail. So this gives us a standard tag here, but you can also see that we have the little bending detail attributed to the tag as well. So I can place this out here, for example, and then I'll select this link over here. And equally, I can place this out over here. Again, looking at the presentation of these tags, I can, of course, now justify those to the left hand side. So they're all neat and tidy. Let's also take a look at some improvements for the bending details themselves. So if I select this link again here, I'm going to go ahead and select bending detail and this time I'll choose realistic. So here we can see that we've got the bending detail and we'll place that down. 
And what we can now do is we can individually select a dimension and manually move it. So of course, this is a great way of making sure that our bending details actually make sense. So previously, we were really just stuck with what uh, we were given within the interface. But now you can see I can just tab, select, and drag these where I want them to go. Now, of course, if you wanted to reset these equally, you could do, you could select that, and you could just go ahead and reset that position. Now, this can also be done for these new bending detail tags as well. Again, we can use the tab key to select individual dimensions and go ahead and edit those as we see fit. Okay, so here I think we've seen a really strong set of tools for this release for reinforcement detailing and reinforcement modeling. Next, we'll move into the analytical modeling features. So we have a simple analytical model open here. And the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the new feature of being able to make the nodes and, of course, the associated members move with grid. Now, I've just selected a node on the right hand side here, and you can now see we have this new built in parameter called move with grids. And of course, this is on for all of my nodes within the model. So Based on this, if I select grid four and I now drag this, we can see straight away that that analytical model is flexing and updating parametrically. Now, of course, this is a massive improvement where we're actually building an early analytical model for the engineering team. We can now also control the local coordinate system orientation. So in the 3D view, I'm just gonna go into visibility graphics and I'm gonna make sure here that I've got the coordinate system set for my analytical members and I'll also switch it on for my panels as well. Now, if I go ahead and select one of my members here, so for example, this column, you can now see that we can flip the X axis. And we'll do the same thing for the panel. If I select the panel, you'll notice that we can align the X axis or flip the Z axis. Now, of course, this is important because when you actually apply loads uh, to this, obviously the direction of that load is then based on the axes that we apply it to. It's also useful to have this control when exporting the analytical model out to various analysis tools. We can also now trim and extend analytical elements as well as split the members as well. So for example, if I go to the modify tab and I just use the standard split tool here, you can now see I can just go ahead and split these members quite easily just with the standard Revit tools. So if I select the analyze tab and I go ahead and draw a new member in here, so let's just uh, draw a member across here for example, you can see here that it is projecting beyond the beam. So now I can go to the modify tab and I can just go ahead and use the trim tool. So here I'm gonna select the cutting edge and then pick the piece that I want to keep. And you can now see we've been able to trim that analytical member back. We've also seen some huge improvements to the Dynamo player scripts used for analytical model automation. Let's take a look at that in a different model. So here we've got a small physical model and you can see here that we've got a concrete slab sitting over some beams and also here we've got a composite model. So we've got a composite slab sitting over steel beams. Now previously the Dynamo player would have got these levels wrong and also the walls wouldn't actually join up. So let's now take a look at the new and improved analytical automation tool. So we'll select analytical automation. In the Dynamo player, of course, we want to convert the physical to the analytical model. We'll make a selection set of our physical elements. And we can now put in some tolerances. So we'll put in the 300 mil tolerance here and also a 300 here. And we'll go ahead and run the tool. So we can now see the analytical model was built. So we'll close down the Dynamo player and let's just inspect what's happened here. So when we have a look at this, we can now see that the analytical plate is at the correct level. And more importantly, we can now see all of these walls are actually joined together. So that's a, a big improvement to the automation of the analytical model. Now there are some updates to the steel detailing tools within Revit. So we haven't seen any updates with steel detailing for quite a while. So what's now happened is that the connections can obviously be applied to the elements, but once the connection's been applied to a beam or a column, it's essentially a fabrication element. And that was quite limiting because we couldn't actually split the objects or align to those objects. So Autodesk are starting to fix some of these limitations now, and we can now use the Blit tool to actually split objects with connections. We'll open up a basic steel model so we can actually see this new change. So here you can see that we've got a simple steel model and I've already applied a base plate and a clip connection to the column and the beam. 
Now, normally, the column would then be a fabrication element, and we wouldn't be able to actually process that with standard Revit tools. So now, what I might want to do is actually put a splice on the column. So now, I can just go to the split element tool here. We can actually select the column, and straight away, you can see that I'm able to actually put a splice on that. Now, if I select the two column elements here, and then we then go to the Steel tab, we can go to Connection, in the properties palette, we can just do a search here for a splice perhaps, and we can then apply the splice to the model. So looking ahead into the future of Revit, I think we'll see the steel detailing being expanded a lot more. So looking ahead into the future of Revit, since advanced steel has been retired, I think we'll start to see more and more features being applied to Revit itself. Okay, so thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you in the next video.